Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I want to kick this video off discussing the RTX 3080 Ti. In a moment, we'll get into the release date of the card, which is an exclusive, but I do want to touch on the specifications as we have a couple of updates courtesy of kopt 7 Kimmy, and to my understanding, discussing things with a few people, it does seem to be accurate. So first, the good news is that the mining nerf that we saw with the RTX 3060 does seem to be present with the RTX 3080 Ti. I grant you that I don't think this nerf does enough uh, for enough types of mining, but yeah, it is still present, which I guess is better than nothing. So that is confirmed by Copity. Furthermore, we have information concerning the specification of the GPU. So it's uh, housing 10,240 CUDA cores, which is a slight cut to the RTX 3090, but not exactly significant. The new information, though, concerns the memory. So there's 12 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory, and this is running at 19 GPPS. So essentially, it seems that the memory bus of the RTX 3090 is the same as RTX 3080 Ti. The difference is, of course, the memory density is cut significantly. It's going to be very interesting to see how this GPU performs versus the RTX 3090, particularly when it comes to overclocking, as there's no information as of the time I'm recording this anyway on things like clock frequencies. But this card, of course, will be very competitive for folks who really want high-performance GPU. Now, the 12 gigabytes of memory should be more than enough for gaming, but for those who really want to push the boat out, there are certain uh, applications or what have you that will, of course, still benefit from the RTX 3090's vastly increased amount of memory. But the question is the pricing. Now, I am still waiting to get an update from my source on the pricing of this GPU. But last I heard, which was earlier this year, it was going to be priced at 999 US dollars. So basically a thousand bucks which makes sense given AMD's pricing of cards such as the RX 6900 XT. And now the moment that you've all been waiting for, when will you be able to procure one of these cards? Well, assuming nothing bad happens, we will be able to pick up one of these GPUs from store shelves mid-April. I don't have an exact date, but I was told mid-April. So yeah, this card has been hotly anticipated. And as I mentioned a moment ago, it has gone under numerous re re reworks. And one of my uh, AIB spies who has provided me, like Papa Jensen provides DLSS, has uh, told me that unless something really bad happens, the release date for the RTX 3080 Ti is still scheduled to be mid-April. And this also brings me to the other obvious question, what about the RTX 30 refresh? Is there going to be a refresh at all? As there have been so many rumors that we're going to see a variance of the RTX 3080, for example, with more RAM. And of course, this could also be a trickle down for the rest of the stack. Well, I asked my source and they told me that at the moment, there is some whispers um, that they've been hearing about a refresh, but it's by no means certain. And there are a couple of reasons that I believe that a refresh is looking less and less likely. Now, I'm not saying it won't happen, but I think that it's increasingly unlikely it's going to happen. There are a few reasons behind this. Reason one, the RTX 3080 Ti is launching with 12 gigabytes of memory. So if, for example, the RTX 3080 and it's rumored 20 gigabytes of memory was released, people would be like, dude, dude, Jansen, we're gonna have to have an intervention here, okay? Um, you know, things are confusing enough with the, uh, my God, my brain, like there's so many different memory configurations of the 30 series cards there. The, the, the RTX 3060 and it's 12 gigabytes of memory. And then of course you've got, you know, the RTX 3080, sorry, 3060 Ti, and it's eight gigabytes of memory. Like, God, it's confusing even for me trying to remember all this stuff. Um, brain go brer. But yeah, basically, long story short, I think just because of that alone, we're not gonna see an increase in the amount of memory capacity anyway for the SKUs. I think there's a good possibility Nvidia might do a small shuffle in the future, may make some cards end of line or whatever, or increase the capacity of some of the lower end GPUs. But again, that's just speculation, and that is not based on evidence or anything I've been hearing firsthand. The other thing too, is that RTX 30 series cards are just flying off store shelves. I even have numbers for the RTX 3060 and RTX 3060 Ti launches, at least um, you kind of in some regions. 
and believe me there were a lot of cards i don't want to give an exact number on camera um but yeah it was a lot like it was way 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 more than what amd have available for their equivalent product and i don't mean just slightly more i mean like multiple times more and they still sold out and long story short you know releasing a whole new series of SKUs, it just it doesn't really make sense for nvidia at this point like the rtx 30 and rx 6000 series are both competing against one another and we know that rdna 3 is not going to launch until next year um, I don't have an exact release date as of the time I'm recording this. It was insinuated to me it's going to be around the um, kind of midpoint of next year, but I'm not 100%, so don't hold me on that. I am certain it's going to be next year, though, that RDNA 3 launches. Yeah, because of all of this, I just don't believe that NVIDIA actually needs to uh, relaunch the RTX 30 series. Um, it, it's possibly going to happen. I might get egg on my face, but... I think it's more likely at this point that NVIDIA are going to let the RTX 30 series rock at least, at the very least, until kind of the latter part of this year. And I don't think Lovelace is launching this year at all. Again, RDNA 3 is launching next year. I believe that Lovelace is also launching next year. And the performance targets, as I've discussed, you know, a couple of times exclusively for RDNA 3 are drastically increased as of, uh, as are Lovelace. So... Yeah, that's just that's just my opinion on that. I think it's very unlikely we're going to see a refresh. And now we're going to move on to the ray tracing performance of the RX 6700 XT, and then we'll finish off with what's going on with AMD's upsampling technology, because I have a couple of updates for you. Since AMD chose not to divulge the information at their event yesterday, I'm going to go ahead and tell you what it was. Um, I'm not going to give you all of the figures because, quite frankly, there are several benchmarks here and, you know, you, you kind of get the point after just a few. And I'm also going to deliberately fudge a couple of the numbers um, because I was asked to. To be clear, these are not going to be drastic changes. So, for example, 60 goes to like 80 or, you know, vice versa. But what I am going to do is just change them by a couple. Again, my source asked me to do this. So I'm deliberately fudging the numbers just a couple of uh, points. Anyway, we'll start things out with uh, Battlefield 5 and uh, the RTX 3060 Ti. Again, I want to stress this is at 1080p. Uh, the RTX 3060 Ti scores 104. The RTX 3070 scores 115. Meanwhile, the 6700 XT scores 96. Dirt 5. We have 50 and 55 for NVIDIA's cards respectively. And then the RTX, sorry, the RX 6700 scores 77 frames a second. And then finally, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 120 and 110 for NVIDIA's cards, respectively. And then finally, AMD's card brings up the rear with 88 frames a second. There also seems to be a really big push for them to say things like this is like kind of a, an entry level ray tracing card. Obviously, uh, RDNA 2 doesn't have the ray tracing performance of NVIDIA's Ampere architecture. This is fi fairly well understood at this point. Honestly, this card is fine for ray tracing performance. Um, you're probably not going to want to enable it with uh, 1440p titles. We'll wait, of course, until we actually get hold of the card to really know. But it's also possible that as developers, as developers, excuse me, become more familiar with uh, AMD's hardware, ray tracing performance will go up anyway and be possibly more competitive with NVIDIA. So the final thing for AMD, and that is the upsampling technology. As you're probably aware at this point, AMD kind of officially confirmed that they're working on this. It's going to be a competitor to DLSS. We'll get into that in just a second, but there's been very little information. They said that they would let us know further about this this year, but obviously it's now this year and there has been no updates really. But this tech apparently will work on the PlayStation 5, the Xbox Series X, and also AMD's own desktop GPUs, but no other information really has been provided. So I have a couple of small updates for this. Unfortunately, I can't give you a whole insight into how this tech works because it's still being kept rather hush-hush. So um, a couple of people have told me that now AMD are providing their code to games developers, but it's in alpha. So to stress, this is not going to be launching tomorrow by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, if you've been watching the channel for any length of time, 
you'll know that I was told that there's almost no way it's going to launch at the same time as the RX 6700 XT. In fact, one person, when I asked um, whether it will be uh, debuting at the same time as the 6700 XT, they basically said to me, are you stupid? So I was like, no, <laughs> gave a sad face. But yeah, long story short, it's not happening anytime soon, at least from what I'm told by now two or three sources. Furthermore, uh, when it comes to the tech, it doesn't seem to just be like something you click in the control panel. I'm trying to get exactly how this works and I'll divulge a little more about the tech in just a second, but it seems to need to be implemented on a per game basis. So I don't know the exact length of effort that you need to go through compared to let's say Nvidia's DLSS, but it doesn't seem to be effortless. So there still needs to be some code and optimization done by the developer. And yeah, this does mean that for those who are just kind of hoping that you could just run this on basically any game, that does not seem to be the thing. Of course, that's also the same thing for NVIDIA as well, although one really positive thing for NVIDIA is the implementation of DLSS basically as a plugin now for Unreal Engine. To be fair to AMD, this could also be the case for them as well. After all, they've started to provide their code in Alpha 2 developers, and I would be absolutely shocked if Epic were not one of the studios that they provided this code to, since they are essentially a juggernaut in the industry at this point. Okay. How does it work though? Well, this is where things are not 100% clear, but I do have at least some semblance of an answer. So hopefully it leads you down the path of enlightenment. But basically the gist is that I was told it's a combination of AMD's older technology and also a little bit of AI slash upsampling, which seems to be done on a per frame basis, but I cannot get an answer exactly how it compares to NVIDIA's DLSS in terms of quality or in terms of performance. It was explained to me, I think it was late-ish, no, I think it was earlier this year, it was explained to me that the tech is going to kind of be um, not as good as NVIDIA's in terms of quality, at least if you get the best case scenarios for both. So obviously DLSS has, you know, some ropey implementations and some really good implementation. So in best case scenarios, it was explained to me that NVIDIA's tech is going to look better but obviously it's a lot heavier in terms of uh, the coding because it's basically being done all on the tensor cores and AMD's GPUs do not have that. Instead, it's being run on the compute units. It's still going to be a performance benefit, definitely, but it's going to be very interesting to see how it actually compares to NVIDIA's tech. Personally, I do not expect this tech to be ready in any game for the first half of this year. My personal bet is it's going to be the second half of this year then we're going to see this. Um, yeah, unfortunately, we're just going to have to wait. How it works in consoles is also a mystery. And bear in mind that upsampling in consoles is possibly even more important than desktop, because at the end of the day, with a desktop, you can throw more power behind it. I'm not saying that that's necessarily an answer for everything, but you could technically, you know, add in a faster graphics card or whatever to a degree. With a console, you cannot do that. It's stagnant hardware. So upsampling in that respect is even more important. Uh, Microsoft clearly have their own upsampling tech, which maybe I'll discuss in a future video when they kind of divulge more information. But yeah, it's going to be very interesting to me how all of this compares with NVIDIA, especially because DLSS seems to be present everywhere at the moment. And with so much information regarding the Nintendo Switch and its Switch Pro, which obviously I leaked last year, uh, and it is using an updated variant of NVIDIA's SOC. So you can kind of see how all of the market is starting to come together in this respect. Obviously the proliferation of Unreal Engine, the fact that it's got a plugin for um, DLSS is kind of not an accident, at least in my opinion, that uh, Nintendo are kind of embracing this. Whether we're going to see older games in the Switch library use DLSS, so for example, I don't know, Zelda or Mario Odyssey, and then see an update, I don't know. But it's going to be very interesting to see how all of this comes together over the next uh, year or two, I guess. Anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you did, then please subscribe to the channel and also comment down below what you think the stonks level of the RTX 3080 Ti is going to be and the final pricing. I'm trying to get information 
as to the price and also the stock level. So I'll try to put out an update video for that, you know, in the not too distant future. Um, but also let me know what you think of AMD's upsell plane tech. Is it actually a big deal to you guys? Like, would it, would it nudge you to buy AMD card if it was like really good or would you just go with NVIDIA's? Like what, what is your kind of thoughts on that? With that said, um, there's also going to be a ton of exclusives coming onto the channel over the next few days. As you can probably tell, like I, uh, I mentioned this on Twitter, I literally had an accident. I got over, uh, the cough of doom, let's call it a while ago. Like I got over the plague of undeath <laughs> and literally like a couple of days after I started to feel better, I quite literally managed to fall down the stairs and like smash my face. So it's not too bad at the moment. The swelling has largely gone down, which is nice, but it, it kind of held me back a little bit. So I'm feeling good. I, I didn't break my nose or anything, which is definitely a positive. Um, so yeah, now I'm basically kind of getting back into the swing of things. There's going to be a ton of exclusives on the channel. There's going to be an Xbox exclusive probably up tomorrow. And that is going to be divulging how Xbox performance is going to be getting a lot better soon. Uh, and there's going to be a ton of other stuff as well for PlayStation 2. So with that said, thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.